in 2024, Kenya's then Minister for Mining, Salim Vuria, announced that Kenya has coltan reserves. Coltan is a critical mining ore packed with niobium and tantalum, two elements that are absolute game changers in today's high-tech world. Shout out to Wires254, he has covered mining in Kenya extensively on his channel. I've linked his account to my description, so go check out his work. Now, on to business. These Coltan reserves have been found across six counties. Kenya's also sitting on significant deposits of rare earth elements or REEs, a group of 17 chemical elements vital for everything from electric vehicles to wind turbines. Cortec Mining estimated that Mrima Hills holds one of the largest rare earth mineral deposits in the world, with an in-ground value of up to 62.4 billion US dollars. This site is less than 100 kilometers from Mombasa, close to highways and geothermal power grids, which makes it a prime spot for development. The discovery of coltan and REEs could put Kenya on the map as a major player in the global critical minerals market. Coltan and rare earth elements found in Brima Hill in Kenya have several industrial uses. Niobium, one of the key components of coltan, is critical in industries like construction and aerospace. It's used in high-strength steel alloys for pipelines, bridges, and even engines because of its incredible resistance to corrosion and heat. It's also critical for superconductors in MRI machines and particle accelerators. Rare earth elements, on the other hand, are the backbone of green energy and modern tech. Think EV batteries, wind turbines, smartphones, defense systems, medical imaging, and industrial catalysts. Without REEs, the world's push for clean energy and advanced technology would grind to a halt. But here's the catch. Mining and processing these minerals is complex, and Kenya is just starting to explore its potential. In the next part, we explore the players involved and some of the challenges on the horizon. Right now, two Australian companies, RareX Limited and Iluka Resources Limited, are leading the charge to explore Mrima Hills deposits. They've partnered up with RareX, handling community engagement, environmental protection, and technical assessments. Iluka, on the other hand, is eyeing the possibility of processing these minerals at a new refinery they're building in Western Australia. Under their agreement, Iluka gets first dibs on all rare earths and mineral sands from Rima Hill. No mining license has been granted yet as the project is still in its exploration phase. If mining does move forward, Kenya's Mining Act of 2016 lays out how the revenue will be split. So 70% goes to the national government, 20% to county government, and 10% to local communities. Royalties for critical minerals like REEs and niobium are typically set at 5% of gross sales for the national government. But here's where things get tricky. There is growing concern about foreign companies like RareX and Iluka dominating Kenya's mineral wealth, potentially leaving limited benefits for locals. Australia's push to diversify global supply chains away from China, which controls 60% of REE production and 85% of processing, adds a geopolitical layer. Kenya's strategic partnership with the US only fuels fears that Kenya could be caught in a tug of war between global powers. Add to that environmental risks like thorium, a radioactive element often found in REE deposits and concerns about land rights, community displacement, and corruption. So, what's the way forward? Nationalization is the final solution, where Kenya would take full or majority control of its mineral assets, sidelining foreign companies. While the 2010 constitution vests minerals in the state, the Mining Act of 2016 encourages private investment through regulated licenses. 
Nationalization will be met by challenges such as Kenya lacking the advanced technology and expertise needed for REE and Niobium processing and also financial constraints. But there are steps Kenya can take to build capacity and maximize benefits while pushing for nationalization. First, invest in geological surveys and a robust national geodata center to map out mineral zones like Kwale and Trukana. Second, start small with pilot processing plants for REEs and Niobium at Mrima Hill, potentially partnering with countries like Japan or South Korea who have the know-how. Third, train a skilled workforce through STEM programs at universities focusing on geology, metallurgy, and mining engineering. Fourth, upgrading energy and transport infrastructure, strengthening environmental protections, and also mobilizing financial resources. The $62 billion potential of Murima Hill is a once-in-a-generation opportunity for Kenya, a country not traditionally known for its mineral wealth. But with foreign investment, corruption risks and technical challenges, this needs to be handled with care. Nationalization, paired with strong anti-corruption measures and heavy investment in research and STEM education, could ensure that Kenya's youth and its people reap the rewards of this mineral wealth. The future is bright, but it's up to Kenya to seize it responsibly.